All right, welcome to a great how-to video. Um, a lot of people ask about how to do screen shake. Now, screen shake, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, there's smooth screen shake. There's really like shaky screen shake. Uh, you know, it depends what you want to go after. And there's tons of ways to do it. So what we're going to show you here is we're just going to show you a what I like to call a smooth version of it, where the shaking is very smooth. What you're seeing there is just um, one direction shake. Hopefully it's showing nice and smooth in the video. But basically what I make use of here is some mathematical functions, sine and cosine. And what they let you do is actually a pretty nice customizable screen shake. So you can see here when I'm hitting the asteroid slowly, it's a slower, smooth back and forth. And if I actually do a lot of faster speed here, it's very easy to customize so the screen shake becomes more and more. And you know what? There's probably only like eight, nine, ten lines of code here. So let's take a look at this. Now, before doing this, there's actually a little example I've made here because it uses a function, co so, blah, <laughs> a function called cosine and sine, which are math functions. So I've made use of this in this little sample. For those that have really no math background with sine and cosine, basically sine and cosine of an angle or a number produces a pattern like this. So as the number gets bigger, this is what the cosine does. And really we're just concerned with the up and down motion here, the way it changes. It's a very smooth sort of circular wavy motion. And so I'm making use of this mathematical function to basically do my shake. And so my shake is basically this, but happening a lot faster. And also, my shake gets smaller at the end of the shake. So instead of going all the way here and all the way here, it mellows out and becomes smaller and smaller until it just isn't shaking anymore. It's just a straight line. So let's take a look at this cosine script. Um, if you already know cosine and exactly how it works, you can probably skip ahead until you see uh, this stuff not being looked at anymore. But here's what I've done. I've basically made this object right now that has three variables that are important. One is time, amplitude, which is height, how much up and down this shake is going to do, and frequency is going to help control how fast the up and down is happening. Obviously, my shakes have a higher frequency, you know, like eight. And so when we run it, okay, it's probably even more than eight, but you get you know, a much faster kind of up and down happening. Now, how are these three variables used? So time, amplitude, frequency are just used here. What I want to do, there's the cosine math equation. The cosine math equation here basically takes the cosine of a value. And because part of my value I have in here is time, and I'm making time always go up, I've got my game set at 60 frames a second, so just a rough estimate is 1 60th of a second I'm adding to the time. This time value keeps getting bigger. And when I take the cosine of that value, well, if the value keeps getting bigger, the cosine keeps spitting back a different value. And it has a circular part to it, and that's the up and down. And I don't want to go into it. You can Wikipedia that one and read more about cosines if you don't know it. So that's sort of one key, is this value keeps getting bigger. The other part is the amplitude. Once this sends me back an answer, and this answer is always between negative 1 and 1, I times it by amplitude. So you see here that I've set the amplitude here to 100. So when I end up calculating this value variable, if the biggest this cosine can send back is 1, 1 times 100 is 100. That'll be the biggest it could be. If the smallest value this cosine can return is negative 1, then negative 1 times 100 will be negative 1. Or sorry, negative 100. Good math there, right? And so you can see how this value ranges from positive 100 all the way down to negative 100. And the cosine spits back a very nice wave-like circular smooth up and down value change force. And then all I do is as this is sort of cycling up and down, I just say create a new circle at 
150 plus value. And value will go positive, and value will go negative, right? That wave-like motion. So this is what I'm using in my solution to my shake. Now let's take a look at how I actually coded the shake using these basics. So in my actual game room, what I have is, is um, I have this object. Let's just get out of here. I have this object called Screen Shaker. And what happens is every time the player gets hit by something, or I can actually hit the S key too to force it, a Screen Shaker object is created. So this object gets made, gets the shaking going, and then destroys itself when the shaking is over. Here's the variables that I've ended up using. Okay, just look at the ones that are uh, showing here. I have Horizontal Shake. What this is, is this is like the amplitude. I'm saying the most shake is 15 pixels to the left or 15 pixels to the right. So it's how much left and right shake we want to have. Shake rate is sort of like that frequency variable. This one will basically increase or decrease how fast that left and right is going to happen. So how fast is that cosine going to uh, make the wave-like motion? Decay rate is an important one. When you do shaking, you don't want to just shake fast and then it just instantly stops. A lot of good sort of smooth shaking motion, the shaking starts you know, violent and then it mellows out and it basically decays down to nothing. And when it reaches nothing, that's what I'm going to destroy the object and the shaking is over. Shake count is basically my timer here. I need a variable that just increases with time so that when I do that cosine that you know, the value is changing, so my cosine value will change and, you know, make the wave-like motion. Here's my step event for Screen Shaker. Shake count goes up. That's basically just a little, let's progress, uh, make the value bigger. The H shake variable, which was the amplitude, right? How much left and right it's going to do. I times it by decay rate. And since the K rate was a small value, right, 0.97, H shake is just going to keep dropping over time, right, and get smaller and smaller. You'll see here if my H shake eventually gets below one pixel, you know, the amplitude is less than one, I know there's no point shaking anymore. I finish the shake. I put my views back to zero, which you'll see in a second, and I destroy my shaker. And then the shaking's done. Now here's the real key here. Now if you haven't watched any videos on view screens, so I have one on view screen follows player and another important one is views and drawing using view x view and view y view. This next part probably won't make a lot of sense but basically what I'm doing is I'm using game maker views and I'm basically picking up the view and I'm going to be moving the view you can see right here, I say, hey, view x view. Set yourself equal to xp, which is what I use my cosine equation with. Now, what this does is it basically takes the window GameMaker's looking at, and it makes it shift over to the left or shift over to the right. And since it's using that nice cosine equation, it's going to shift nice and smoothly to the left and to the right. So you'll see here what I've done. 8 shake, that's my amplitude that started at a value of like 15 times cosine and there's my timer that keeps going up and there's my shake rate which you can adjust depending on how fast or slow you want the shaking to take place this calculates a value that just keeps changing in that nice wave like you know motion up and down up and down and you also have to remember eight shake keeps getting smaller so the result here of X position keeps getting smaller over time and keeps doing that wave like motion and I just say hey view X view 0 set yourself equal to XP so when the soul starts 8 shake was 15 this will end up being 15 so whoa way off to the side 15 pixels to the side and then that wave like motion continues and so what you end up getting is you get exactly what we have in the game here you basically have, I'll just hit the S key, 
but I hit the S key and you get the shake and you can see how it is doing that nice wave like back and forth and a nice mellow out right and you can obviously fiddle with the variables you know to make things work differently for instance I've got mindset so the faster the ship hits it actually changes that eight shake to a larger value and you can change the frequency you know variable to a higher variable and so you can fiddle with these ones in here you know the faster the hit maybe make this shake rate a little higher maybe make the amount amplitude of the shake a little bigger too slower hits etc etc right so you can fiddle now you'll also see I've commented out some lines here there's the vertical shake and if I go to my step, I can put the vertical shake in. And I'm basically just using the exact same thing. You'll see here I'm using a sine instead of cos. Sine and cos, very similar. You can go look it up if you want. And when you have both of those in there, you get up and down and left and right shake that you can sort of customize. Oh, big mistake here. Let's take that out and give it a run just to prove that I'm capable of getting this working. And now you have that, right? Sort of a little up and down. And it's a, like I said, this is a nice smooth motion one, right? But it works well. And especially works well if you uh, incorporate it with the speed of hitting. So it's not the exact same shake every time. You get a slightly different shake. And if you just want to quickly see that one, I'll say here that when the player hits the rock, I do a bunch of stuff here. But I do the screen shake code, and my screen shake code basically makes a screen shaker, but I set the horizontal shake equal to an amount. And that amount is based on the velocity of the player. So you can, I won't spend time on that here, but you can go peek at this project file if you want. So that's one basic screen shake. I know maybe that loses a few of you if you're not solid on the views and you don't know a lot about cosines, but just to give you something to go research and look about, nice, easy method, right? Easy to reproduce. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys, if you like this video, why not click the like button, or even better, subscribe to this channel, share it with a couple friends. That's what keeps us going. Thanks.